what are the five purposes that God has for the church? If you look at two very important passages of scripture, and that's where we get the five purposes that God has for his church, it is the great commandment and the great commission. Two passages that we're very familiar with. Just let's go over it one time, right? The great commandment and the great commission. You know that's from Matthew chapter 22 and then Matthew chapter 28. These two passages form kind of what God has in mind for the church and for you as a disciple of Christ. The great commandment says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. This is repeated in a couple of times, uh, places in the scriptures. And what that tells us is that the primary goal of man is to know God and to enjoy God and to love God with all his heart, mind, soul and strength. So that's one of the purposes that we have. We call that worship. We call that worship. Worship is the primary purpose that God has created us for. We were created for his pleasure. We were created to give him uh, joy. We were created to enjoy uh, God. That is the reason God has created each and every one of us, for a relationship with Him. And when we live to worship Him, we are accomplishing that purpose. We'll talk more about that as we go forward. But the, the first purpose is worship. The second purpose is love your neighbor as yourself. And so when Jesus was answering this question to uh, the rich young ruler, He said, all the, the commands are wrapped up in these two. You balance these two, God and people, and pretty much you've got everything sorted. Love the, love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor in the same manner as you love yourself or love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. You can't love without serving, right? Loving and serving go together. And when I love someone, I serve them, I serve their purposes, I serve their needs, I serve their desires, I become aware of their concerns and I meet those concerns. So when you do that, you demonstrate love. That's called ministry. Ministry and worship are the first two that you find in the great commandment. We'll talk about how we implement all of these, but primarily uh, worship then we have ministry. To go to the next three, you have to skip to the Great Commission. The Great Commission is what the Lord Jesus gave to his disciples when he was about to leave and return to heaven. He says, go into all the world and as you go, I'm authorizing you, as you go, make disciples. He says that you do that, you do that by preaching the gospel. Firstly, by preaching the gospel or by sharing the good news, sharing the good news, letting people know what uh, God has done for them. So when you do that, you are evangelizing or that you are, you are, or this is called evangelism. Another word for evangelism is mission. God sends you out on a mission and the mission of your life is to let people know that there is redemption, that there is forgiveness, that there is reconciliation with God. So evangelism is the third purpose of the believer, third purpose of the church. And then he says, you do this, you make disciples by baptizing them. In baptism, we put people under the water and bring them out. And that picture of baptism, it, it reflects the Lord Jesus Christ and his death and his resurrection. When he died, he went under the under the into the into the ground. And when we when we go under the water, we kind of identify with Jesus that we are dead to the world, just like Jesus died. And as Jesus rose again, we we talk about how we are alive to Christ, dead to the world, but alive to Christ, and we identify with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now Jesus is in heaven, and his body is on earth. So we identify people with the body of Christ by baptizing them into the fellowship. This is called fellowship baptize them into the fellowship the last one is teaching them to do teaching them to do not just to know the laws not just to be aware of the laws but teaching them obedience that's discipline and when you discipline yourself to be obedient you discipline yourself to grow you discipline yourself to uh, to follow Christ step by step by step we call that discipleship this is called discipleship so let's go over that again five purposes that God has for the individual that God has for the church by which we are reconciled to him and that we live for his purposes number one is to love him with all of our heart 
mind, soul and strength. Number two is to serve people around us by demonstrating the love of God in service to others. The third one is to tell the story of God's redemptive uh, history, to tell the story of what God has done in my life. And we call that evangelism or living on mission for God. And the next one is fellowship, to come into the family of God, to assimilate into the family of God, to understand what it means to be part of God's family and to identify with his body here on earth as we witness corporately about the Lord Jesus. And last but not least is discipleship, is the discipline of walking with God, the habits that one puts into place in order to grow in their Christ-likeness. That's discipleship. This is about celebrating God. This is about serving people. This is about telling our story. Fellowship is about belonging and assimilating with the family. And discipleship is about growing to be like Christ. Those are the five purposes. And we choose to implement it by balancing and giving equal emphasis to all five purposes in scriptures.